All right, so I'm back with part three for the uh, RM Tech Central uh, server rack cooling project. And if you haven't seen part one or part two, uh, I recommend that you watch those first. I'll go ahead and uh, link those in the description below. Uh, don't worry, they're not super long videos. I think the longest is like three minutes or something like that. Uh, they will just help give a little bit more context to this video right here. Uh, with that said, for those of you that have seen those two videos, uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and pick up where I left off. So right now we're at about 76 and a half, 76.2 degrees Fahrenheit uh, ambient temp. Now this probably isn't the best day to make this video because the air conditioning isn't working uh, the greatest. It's working, but it's not working great. So regardless, I'm still going to make this video. Uh, the only reason that would matter is because I planned on doing some tests and uh, showing you some results in uh, you know what I hope to be these massive temperature differences but I guess that's not really gonna stop me from doing that the results just aren't gonna be as wowing as they would be otherwise so I don't know when the uh, HVAC guy is gonna be here I doubt it's gonna be today probably not gonna be tomorrow and I don't really want to wait around and put this uh, last video on the back burner. So moving forward, let me go ahead and show you what I have done since part two. First thing being installing the exhaust fan, which is right here. And I decided to seal off the inner sides of the rack. So you can see that there's quite a few cables going through there. So I did my best to leave spaces for those, and then sealed everything off that I could. Same thing on the other side. And with the ambient temp being 76.8, in the front of the rack, we are at, well, it just jumped up to, oh, okay. It's, it can't decide. We'll just say 71 degrees. And again, that number would probably be much lower if the AC was putting out what it was supposed to be, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, one of the biggest things that I changed since part two was removing the fans from the base of the server rack and then relocating them over here underneath this duct. So unless you really want to see what's underneath here, I'm not going to take this off again. Uh, it's not that it's a huge pain in the butt to do, but I've already done it so many times at this point and operating the camera with one hand leaves me with only one other hand to take this off and then put it back on. Don't really feel like doing it right now. So, but just picture it like this. A vent is right here and there are two fans right here. As a matter of fact, the same two fans you saw in part two that were originally down here, except I made a new mount for them so they sit nice uh, on the top of that uh, vent right there. So the reason why I moved the fans from the front of the rack uh, to over there was because when the fans were sitting there and then they kicked on, the temps actually went up. And I'm like, okay, well, that's actually the complete opposite of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So what's the deal? Uh, and I finally figured, well, I think I figured it out. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter what the reason is. I mean, it's working uh, so much better right now. But what I have uh, theorized is that when the fans were off, the air coming out from the air handler downstairs or should I say the, uh, the furnace. Um, but the air was just kind of flowing out naturally, billowing out and collecting in this area in a natural way, a natural pattern. When the fans kicked on, 
the fans who are essentially sucking up that air and then just blasting it out in a really inefficient way versus the natural flow of the air. So I thought, all right, well, I still really want to use these fans because they're a huge help as far as pushing uh, quite a bit more air. So I was like, all right, well, where's the next best spot? And that's when I decided to put them over there and I couldn't be happier. So it's the best of both worlds at this point. I have the benefit of uh, those fans being installed and them uh, increasing that airflow and also the airflow being able to flow up naturally uh, like it did before the fans were installed. So I guess I'm going to do my best to show you some small temperature differences. Uh, I guess I already showed you the ambient temp, 76.8, uh, front of the rack, uh, 71. And yes, I understand that the front of this rack is a mesh and some air does escape. I am still undecided on whether or not I'm going to seal this in with like a piece of plexiglass or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna wait until the AC is performing uh, the way it should before I make that decision. Uh, but until uh, that gets fixed, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Now, surprisingly, this door does make a difference in temperature. So it definitely is holding in some air. Uh, I don't know how quickly this is going to respond to that. If I go ahead and open it right now, I definitely, I don't want to stand here, you know, all day holding the camera pointed at this thing. So I guess uh, maybe I'll try to find something else to talk about uh, for a minute or two while we see if that actually goes up. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I, uh, I sealed this in more at the bottom. And let me go ahead and pull the uh, front bezel off the UPS here. So this whole duct I constructed is kind of a uh, uh, modular uh, piece together design. What I mean by that is that the configuration of the duct can be uh, in a couple different ways. One is like this, where we are connected to that vent, and then it extends all the way to here, and then there's this block off right there, and the air just flows up. But this is also detachable, and the way that works is by removing these Velcro strips, which hold these flaps up, once the Velcro is removed, these flaps fold down, that flap and that flap right there. And then essentially you just pull this whole bottom piece out. Uh, and you can kind of see where it splits right there, where that seam is. And there was one main reason for that, and that was because I couldn't fit this thing under here all in one piece. So I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to fit it under there uh, with this attached to it. So this being a separate piece was in my original plan, but this whole long piece right here uh, was all a single piece. Realized I was like half an inch or something off where it was hitting one of the legs on this side. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't get it in uh, no matter how hard I tried. So I thought, well, maybe we will, uh, we'll, we'll cut it off and the duct ends right here, again, right where the seam is, and then this is going to be a separate part. And then there's two magnets, one right there, one right there. So when you're putting this thing in, it essentially slides in and then kind of snaps into place, and then I fold these flaps up, Velcro them, and then um, basically move this little flap over to help seal up the uh, those corners. That corner right there and that corner right there, and then I've also installed these little flaps on the back. So that way, air, the, the only place air can really go is up and then be sucked in um, by the servers. And I think that's another reason why this door, even though it is mesh, it actually helps a little bit because it's not that the air is just necessarily coming up and just sitting in here. It's 
kind of being uh, assisted a little bit more by the servers and networking equipment. Um, these things suck in air. Uh, pretty, uh, they're pretty, pretty powerful, and the fans aren't even that high right now. Let me grab a piece of uh, paper towel here and see if we can. Yeah, so. It's kind of more of a uh, a feel thing, but I can definitely feel the paper towel being pulled towards the servers the closer I get. Anyways, let's go take a look at that temperature now that the door has been open for a while. Just snap this back in here really quick. Okay, so we're rising. I mean, we're getting up to 72 now. So that's definitely proof that the door does something. And that's going to continue to rise. It's just going to take a little while. I don't really trust the uh, readings on these servers. Uh, they just seem to be way out of whack compared to any other instrument that I've used to measure temperature. Uh, also, yes, I know these servers are old um, and I plan to upgrade them at some point. I don't know when that's going to be. I'm just looking for a good deal. So when that time comes, these things will be going. And so out with the old and with the new, but we'll see. Uh, when the time comes, that'll happen. It's not going to be today, that's for sure. Or probably won't even be in the next few months, but you never know. But anyways, yes, temperature is rising. It's fluctuating now. I think me moving around and moving air, you know, any little bit of air I move at this point is going to make the reading change. But uh, let's see, there was one more thing I wanted to do. Oh, I wanted to show you the difference in airflow with the auxiliary fan or the auxiliary fans uh, that are underneath that duct off versus them being on. So let me go ahead and manually switch this fan off. Now, right now, everything is just running constantly. I set this to a very low temperature because I wanted everything to just be running constantly. Uh, so that way I can um, mess around with some stuff and do some testing and whatnot. And uh, once I'm ready to put the sides back on and everything, I'm going to figure out the optimal temperature to set this guy at. And then at that point, it's going to be automatically controlled. Uh, so whenever that threshold is met, then the exhaust fan will kick on and the auxiliary fans will kick on at the same time. But I just flipped off the auxiliary fans. So let me go ahead and grab that piece of paper towel again and show you the type of airflow or the amount of airflow that we're getting from this right now. So when I get it in there, just, okay, that should be fine. All right, so that's the airflow we're getting from the unit downstairs. Now, when I flip the auxiliary fans on, we're gonna see a big improvement. So three, two, one, on. Yeah, so that thing definitely jumped up quite a bit. And as you can see, I don't even think I'll be able to place that back in there. Then I'll turn it back off. And back on. So huge improvement. That's why when I realized that the fans weren't working out the way I wanted them to when they were right here, I thought, well, I definitely want to keep them included in the setup. I just need to find another spot to put them. And I think I was right on the money, sticking them right in there. So I guess that's pretty much it for now. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I might make a part four. I don't know. Uh, if I do, it's obviously not going to be until the uh, AC is fixed. And once that happens, then I can definitely give you 
uh, way better examples on the uh, temperature differences. So, all right, well, if anybody has any advice or any ideas on how I can make this even more efficient, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know uh, in the comments. So, hey, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, if you hated it, hit that thumbs down. All right, uh, I'll see you in, well, either part four if I make it, or if not, I'll uh, catch you in another video. All right, guys, take care.